So first we are going to see the flowchart of our project. Initially we are going to model the existing HVAC system in PSSC software. Then we are going to perform the power flow fault instability test. After that we are going to design the back to back configuration of HVDC link between the anti-DC and K-electric utilities. After the incorporation of the HVDC link, we are going to perform the contingency analysis, fault isolation tests and stability analysis. And after that we would conclude the feasibility of incorporation of HVDC link. Here is a geographical diagram of our system. This is the anti-DC utility which is connected to the national grid and it is connected to the K-Electric utility through two buses. One is the NKI junction and the other one is the Jamshore junction. Now the problem with this existing system is the lack of power regulation which is shown in this SLD diagram. We have increased the load at the K-Electric side. You can see these four loads and what happens because of that is because the generation at the K-electric side cannot meet the load demand, the generator at the NTDC side, the Hubco power plant, has to increase its power generation beyond its power limit. And that causes cascaded tripping throughout the national grid and has caused many outages and lack of power flow. As a solution to this problem, we have proposed the HVDC inter interconnection between the two utilities in place for the HVAC interconnection. The proposed HVDC interconnection is between the NKI bus and the KDA at K electric side and between NKI and Baldia at the K electric side. The modeling of the HVAC system has been shown in this spreadsheet. This is the power system simulation expert software in which we have modeled first the buses of the system. These are the plants of the generators. These are the generator actual values which have been incorporated into the spreadsheet. Then we have the loads. After that we have the two winding transformers. This single line diagram shows the HVAC modeling of the system. We can see the power flow between any two buses. The upper one shows the real power flow and the lower one shows the reactive power flow. Now we move towards the load flow analysis of our current HVAC system. This load flow is done through the fixed lobe decoupled newton raphson method. We can see that the process has been completed in four iterations and the largest mismatch has been shown to be 0 0.07 while the swing bus is Hubco which is generating 1096 megawatts of power. Now we see the incorporation of HVDC back to back link in our project. The basic control mechanism of our back to back link has been shown here. There are two kinds of controls which have been incorporated. The first one is the firing angle delay. In this kind of control, we control the amount of current which flows through our converter station by means of the firing angle delay. And in this way, by the control of current, we have actually controlled the power which can flow between the two utilities. The other control is the tap control which is incorporated behind the rectifier and after the inverter within our project. Now the firing angle and the tap control actually fixes the maximum power at the limit which we have provided them. The design parameters of our HVDC back-to-back -back link 
are the rated power at 250 megawatt, the firing angle range is between 8 to 12 degrees, the DC resistance is 0 0.04 ohms, the buses selected are NKI-1, NKI-2 Baldia, NKI-2 KDA, the tap range is between 0.9 to 1.1 and the operating voltage is 220 kilovolts. Now we see the modeling of the HVDC back-to-back -back link in our PSSC file. There are two lines each carrying a, an HVDC converter station. The first one carries 125 megawatts and likewise the second line. We have seen the parameters, the DC line resistance parameters which have been put here. Now we see the parameters for rectifier and inverter. We have seen that the rectifier maximum firing angle and minimum firing angle has been put according to the design. The primary base voltage is 220 kilovolts. And the other parameters have also been shown. Meanwhile, the inverter parameters have also been put. Now the single line diagram of our system after the incorporation of the HVDC link has been shown. This is the NTDC utility which terminates at the converter NTDC 24 bus. After that the interconnection has been made possible through the HVDC link which consists of two DC lines and after which the NTDC utility starts. Meanwhile the connection between the Jamshoro bus and the KDA bus has been broken so that the power can only flow through only these two buses. The contingency analysis considered the different scenarios in which a component of the system is taken out and the power flow of the system is then analyzed. In the first case, we are going to take out one of the DC lines. You can see the initial power generation at the generators. This is the single line diagram of our HVDC back to back link. Now for taking out the DC line, we go towards the control mode and select blocked rather than power mode. And we run the load flow solution again. Hence one of the DC line has been taken out. We check whether the system steady state response varies or not and whether our isolation between the two utilities has been achieved. We see that the power generation of the system has been shown after the DC line 1 has been taken out. We can see that the DC line removal actually causes lesser power to flow from NTDC towards K electric. Now since the power has been reduced to half, now the anti-DC generators need to generate more power while no, uh, uh, <clears throat> no effect of the overloading has been seen on the hubco side. Hence our power regulation has been achieved. Now moving towards the second scenario, we take both of the DC lines out of the system. Now the results are as follows. We see that no power is flowing from the NTDC towards the K electric side. Now the both of the utilities have been completely isolated. So for all the power requirement in the K electric side, the K electric generators bin Qasim 1, bin Qasim 2 and CCP power have to generate the power. Now BQ1 is generating above its limit but still the power isolation has been achieved. The hub core is only producing the, uh, the power for the loads within the NTDC utility. Now a similar case has been shown here. These are the generators. We are taking out the CCPP generator out of power. Now we have seen that the CCPP is out of power. What we see after that is that the hubco side is still isolated from the decrease in the generation at the K electric side. The decrease in the generation at the K electric side has been fulfilled by the Bin Qasim 1 power plant. Our 
power regulation has been achieved. After that we take out the BQ2 power and we again see that the same In stability analysis we see and analyze whether a fault at a particular bus and the removal or outage of a line and after the fault has been removed and the line is again in service whether the system has come back to its original synchronization or not. In the first case we are going to take out the Hubco bus at one second simulation and we see that the corresponding buses achieve the synchronism after three seconds after the fault has been removed. This is the chart for the power megawatt flow and this is the chart for the voltage per unit. We see that the original voltages have been achieved after three seconds of the fault removal. Hence our system is stabilized in the case one. In the case two we put a fault on the NKI1 bus and take out the corresponding line and we see that the power has been stabilized after four to five seconds of the fault removal. Again we see that the voltage has also been stabilized after six seconds of the fault removal. Hence our system is stable in the second case also. In the third case we take out one of the DC lines and see whether the system is still stable or not. We see that the power flow has been reduced to half since now the power which can flow between the NTDC and K electric utilities has reduced to half of it 125 megawatts but still our system is stable. For the voltages we see that after some uh, oscillations the system again comes to its stable voltage value within 4 to 5 seconds. Hence our system is stable in the second in the third case also. In the fourth case we are going to produce a fault at the Baldia bus which is at the K electric side and take out the corresponding line. In this case also our system becomes stable for power and the voltage is plots. We have also shown that when we are testing our system for stability we have to put additional reactive power because of the HVDC uh, uh, power plant uh, HVDC converter station which is taking a lot of the reactive power. For this purpose we have put the, uh, sh uh, uh, the switch shunt capacitors whose value changes with respect to the reactive power demand at the Baldia, Baldia load, Lalazar load, converted entity DC and K electric buses.